The bad news for humanity is the plague of sin and death that we see um, take place in its origin in the Garden of Eden when man disobeys God. And in disobeying God, man is exiled from the place of his presence, the garden of his presence. East of the garden, there are flaming cherubs that are guarding the way back into the tree of life. And then we see generation after generation, mankind uh, devolving more deep and deep, deeper and deeper into sin and the realm of death and getting pushed farther and farther into exile away from the face of his presence. It's, it's bad news because it, it's a crime committed against God. It's, it breaks the very heart of God, disobedience to his, to his living word, rejecting him for an idol that mankind creates in their own image and after their own desires. It's bad news because it separates us from the creator and it leaves us to our own devices and our own ways to be mastered, not just by the realm of sin and death and self, but to follow the course of the power of the prince of the air, to follow the desires of the enemy. The good news is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is good news because it's preeminently about the person of Jesus. And in the person of Jesus, we see clearly the face of God. We understand God and his heart and his nature. In the person of Jesus, we understand that God is a father and that God is love and that that love looks like God selling all, giving all to redeem and to ransom his creation back to himself, to be a prized possession, to give him glory and for his pleasure, that Jesus would put on flesh we see the good news in the very promise that began even after the fall, the first prophetic promise in the scripture concerning the Christ, that from and through the seed of the woman, God would crush the head of the serpent. And though the heel of this promised seed would be bruised, this would be the undoing of Satan's strategies and plans. The good news is Jesus embracing suffering in the midst of revealing the heart of a servant God, meekness and humility, and dying on a cross for our sins, that we would be saved and brought back to the original intent, that we would be sons and daughters of the living God, a bride prepared for Christ the bridegroom. It's good news because it's about God and it's about ransoming us back from slavery to sin and darkness and death, back to the loving arms of a father and our bridegroom king. I still remember the day that I first heard the voice of the Lord beckoning me to come. And in his voice was revealed his very person. I encountered the Lord in his holiness. I recognized the moment that I saw him with the eyes of my heart, that I was standing before the creator of the universe and that he was wholly, completely unlike me. He saved me and set me free and changed me, changed my heart. And in, and in revealing his love and his sacrificial death on the cross, he transformed my nature. He made me like himself to share in, in, in the same spirit to receive the same love. It's because he first loved me that he empowered me to love him back in return, to give him my all. The hatred, the animosity deep within, the pride, the things of this life, the self-centeredness, he, he set me free from slavery to myself, slavery to this world system that I can know him and love him and, be, and behold him. He removed the impediments between me and him. And he gave me the promise of life to come, not just life without numbered days, but a quality of life that began eternal life, the quality of life that began the moment that I said yes by faith and received the gracious gift of, of, of new life, the born again experience to be a new creation. My appeal to you today would be just this that you would call upon the name of the Lord and ask him to reveal 
His beauty and His holiness and His love and the truth of His word and the sure promise of His coming return and judgment of the world that He would reveal to your heart by the Spirit of God, the living Christ, that you would be reminded of the words from the scripture that what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but forfeit his own self, to lose his own soul, that you would hear the words of the Savior, the loving Lamb, that you would come to Him and ask Him to wash you by the blood of His sacrifice from all of your sins, that He would fill your heart with His Spirit and give you a new heart, a heart that can know Him and love Him, a heart that would desire to say yes, that he would, he, would, he would give you a new nature just like His. I would appeal to you that you would ask Him for mercy and for forgiveness and for the beauty of His Spirit and His presence to invade your life, that you would covenant with Him. You would give Him your all, lay down your life, that you would place your trust in Him in this life and in the life to come as your only source of life, your Savior, your Father, your Bridegroom, and your King. I would appeal to you today that you would be born again according to the Scriptures.